What's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. Today is going to be uh, it's going to be a very different kind of video. So today I really want to focus on the story of the eclipse. So back then, back in 2015, it was almost like a joke. Like, hey bro, I really want to drive a car with underglows. But people are going to judge me if I do put like underglows on my 2015 STI, which was a brand new car back in the day. One of my friends told me, well, Dom, that would be great to just recreate the Fast and the Furious Eclipse. That could be an easy thing, like, like most people uh, actually think. I went online and I saw this ad for a 99 Eclipse GS. Uh, in the description, it was like 99 Eclipse GS with some mileage, uh, great condition, but some problem with the engine and the transmission. But nonetheless, at that point, um, that car was not bought to be a driver, not to be uh, just an Eclipse. It was to be a Fast and Furious look-alike car. There was probably only like two replicas in the world, maybe three, I don't know, but it was definitely not well known to the public as it is today. But um, anyway, I got my first set of wheels. And uh, it was, I just decided to go with a set of wheels that kind of look like what you see on the car, on the movie car. And back then I didn't know the difference between an Axis 7 wheels and a Axis Mod 7 wheels. They were, well, they are still two different things, but back then I didn't know the difference between the two because there was actually some of the actual screen used cars with Axis Mod 7, so I didn't know the difference back then. Anyway, I went with a set of Motegi FF7 wheels. Um, they are not at all the same wheels as, as what you see in the movie, but they kind of look the same. And my goal, remember, was only to do kind of a tribute built, but not a screen accurate car or whatever. So, by the time the wheel arrived, I already found on Craigslist a set of Axis Mod 7s. They were chrome and black, and if I got a picture, I'm going to put that on the screen right now. But uh, I drove about 45 minutes to get the wheels. I was super stoked. I was blown away, and I was like, fuck, I really need to put these wheels on the car. I, they are going to look like in the movie, and blah, blah, blah. And at that point, I was pushing my luck. I was really thinking that okay, maybe we're going somewhere else with this build. So at that point, I realized that maybe it was not, this car was not meant to be a tribute car. Maybe it's going to be, maybe not a screen accurate car, but at least I'm going to try my best to get the car as close as possible to the real thing. And then there was also another factor. It was time because as usual, you know me by now, and you know that I really love to push boundaries of how how little time and how little time you can actually build a car like this. But we were in uh, when we started the project for the Eclipse the first time before the restoration and everything. Uh, we started on <clears throat> June second, two thousand fifteen, and the car was supposed to be unveiled July eighteenth, two thousand fifteen, at Race Wars. So that was a little less than two months and it was a huge task like <clears throat> the car needed to have some rust repair we needed to remove the sunroof on the car the interior had to change completely because it was a red on tan interior well it was a red car with tan interior so the car went inside the shop in uh well june of 2015 uh they dismembered the car completely and they began to work the body kit they they tried to fit the body kit to the car. As you may know, the body kit back in the day, like Extreme Dimension body kit, they were not bolt-on body kits. You had a lot of cutting, fitting, and we uh, worked on the car, on the just the body kit alone, for about a week and a half, just to get the proper fitment on the car. And uh, it was not the RoboCar body kit. As you can see by the picture, the, the, the front bumper was kind of huff, the side skirt were not that great, but it kind of looked like it. So that was our main goal. Um, but uh, also, at that time, I already found, uh, well, it was a V2. It was an APR GT2 wing V2. That means carbon fiber side plates and the wing stand were a bit higher, but 
kind of look like the wing in the movie. So I was one step closer to get the car right. Uh, and then I decided to push my luck. I went on Craigslist and I searched for seats. So I just typed in Sparkle Seats because back then I didn't know the name of the seat. There's a set of red Sparkle Torino seat that came out in my screen and I was like, okay, they look like what you see in a movie. So I'm going to buy them. I think back then they were like 500 bucks. I bought the seat and they were red by the way. I bought a seat, went to my guy at Inside Custom Interior, they are the guy who did the interior in the Jetta also, and I asked them, well, could you transform the seat from red to black and gray? They did an amazing job. It cost me about a thousand bucks to redo the seats, but nonetheless, they look like in the movie. But that car, that build was getting out of hand so fast. My initial build budget at the beginning of the build was actually $10,000 and I was way off. But back then, like I told you, there was no Craig Lieberman Instagram. There was no Google that you can search on to just know what to do when you're building these cars. There was no information whatsoever. Every single week of the summer, one after another, there was thousands of dollars getting out of my pocket just to buy new parts for that car. The last part I remember buying was the carbon fiber hood, which is uh, my hood on my car is a Sieben hood. And if you don't know that brand, it's super freaking expensive. And I thought, well, since it's a 99 Eclipse, nobody work on these cars anymore. So they probably have a hood somewhere that they can just give me with a discount. Little that I knew, um, it cost me over a grand to get the hood and get the hood shipped to Montreal. It was super expensive and back then, uh, the US dollar was on par with Canadian dollars. So at least there was that, but it was super expensive. Fast forward to uh, July, probably July 10, July 11. We were one week away from race wars, the first ever race wars in Montreal. I was super excited but super stressed out because the shop was supposed to deliver the car on July 1st. So that way I could have like almost three weeks to promote the show with the car. But instead I had nothing and the car was still in the shop. Nothing was completed yet. The engine was not even in the car and we had the sound system to, to finish, the interior to finish. It was a mess. And there was setbacks over setback. And I remember probably two or three days prior to the show, the shop decided to paint my car. So I was like, okay, so maybe I'll get the car in time. At least I already had the, the graphics by now. So it was July 18, 6 a.m., two hours before the gates open, or almost two hours. I was still at the shop working on the Eclipse and I, I told the guys, well, I'm going to just have some sleep and I'll be back in about 90 minutes to get the car. And they were like, okay, the car will be ready, no problem. I, I remember that day I had my BRZ and arrived to the shop. They told me, well, uh, you can take the car, but we need to boost it in order to start it because for some reason the battery died. I was like, okay, and that was the first of many strikes. And uh, I got in the car, start the car, the clutch was weird and the shifter was weird also. I went out of the shop with the car. I, I've made probably 20 feet and then the car died. They told me, well, we're going to boost it and back the car up into the shop and figure it out. And I was super stressed out because the car needed to be unveiled. I, I paid so much publicity on Facebook and stuff like that just to tell people, well, we're going to unveil the Fast and the Furious Eclipse. All the major website, car like car website of Montreal, they were at the event ready to see the car get unveiled. And I was just sitting in my $30,000 car that was not working and with a ton of problem. At some point I was like, you know what, Let's just fuck it. I'm going to call a tow truck. They are going to tow the truck to the event People are going to see the car on the highway. I don't care at this point, but at least we're going to get the car to race wars. The day went by, it was super cool, super awesome day. Uh, we unveiled the car. The car kind of rolled by itself at the show, so at least that was it. 
and somehow the reaction of the people it was just perfect and that car I don't remember uh, what price it won but it won a trophy at the show so that was cool that was the last show of that year and um, then the car went back to the shop and uh, there's a long story with that uh, company so I don't want to get too much into it but anyway I made them a favor and I told them well you can keep the car for the winter into your showroom so that put so that way people will just come in to see the car and probably buy some stuff from you so that's a good thing over the winter uh, somebody told me well Dom I think I found the wheels that you need and uh, back then remember I still had my mod 7 wheels so that's the same as the movie but with the chrome lip and um, they told me, well, I think my friend still have his old set of wheels in his barn. I'm going to send you some pictures and let me know if it's right. They sent me a picture of a black Eagle Talent or a Mitsubishi Eclipse with 18 inch rims, Axis 7s, and they were like dark gray. I saw these wheels and I was like, oh my freaking God. I want these wheels. They are like, even back then, they were super rare. And uh, there was no replica whatsoever with these wheels already. If there was a car running on Axis uh, wheels, Axis 7 wheels, they were either 19 or 17, but there was no replica with 18 inch rim back then. I got the wheel for 300 bucks because back then people didn't know people were actually buying this these rims to to build a fast and the furious eclipse and by the way this is my tip of the day guys if you're building a replica whatever the car is whether it's the maxima the eclipse the jetta whatever if you find the right part somewhere and that people is willing to sell you the stuff don't tell them it's for a fast and furious car because usually fast and furious car use normal modified parts that were sold back in the day so nowadays these parts aren't that expensive because people just want to throw them away but if you tell these people that you really need these parts for your fast and furious car they know and they are going to do research on how much they could sell these parts for how much more they could sell these parts for and you're going to get screwed like these days Axis 7 wheels, they are selling for a thousand, two thousand, maybe three thousand bucks for a set of wheels that were brand new, probably 500 bucks back in 2001, 2002. So never tell the people you're buying from the reason why you really want these parts. So that's my advice of the day. Anyway, I got the wheels. Uh, it took about three weeks to get the wheel. It was from Southern Ontario, Canada, and they shipped the wheel. Uh, by Grayon, it's uh, uh, like a bus company who ships stuff. Anyway, and they uh, they shipped me the wheels. Uh, they were dark gray, so we needed to repaint the wheel, and then I installed the wheel on the car. I was blown away because in my head that car was it. It was the Fast and the Furious Eclipse. It was the best one in the world, and no one could have a better car than this one that's when i decided to start my instagram based on my clips there's going to be a lot of people who are gonna who are going to love what i'm about to say i was a bit of an ass back in the day so i was really proud of my car let's just say this and um so we went to the show it was in quebec city it was the first indoor car show of the eclipse and people were blown away to see that car. I was super hyped up. Anyway, we did that show, it was cool. Uh, then the car went back to the speed shop when it was in storage. So I got the car back in May of 2016. And um, I already found some new parts. So I, I was ready to install new parts on the car and I found a Robocar rear bumper. If you don't know, the rear bumper of the Eclipse in the movie is a bit taller uh, than a Blitz body kit. I'm going to put uh, a picture on the screen, you're going to see the difference, but uh, these bumpers, if you are 
uh, trying to recreate an Eclipse from the Fast and the Furious. They are super rare because they haven't made a ton of them. Probably a couple hundred body kits over the world. Um, some of them were crushed because the cars were involved in accidents and stuff like that. And I actually found my body kit, well, my rear bumper on a junk, well, in a junkyard on a car. It was like a flaky blue Mitsubishi Eclipse. And, but at least I had the right bumper for the car. It was a real robo car. Uh, the, the best way to find a real robo car and a fake is uh, people are actually trying to cut a hole for uh, the license plate into a fake uh, robo car. And when the body kit is a real one, uh, you don't have to cut that hole. That hole is already there from factory. So I was blown away to see that bumper and uh, we installed that on the car and and for about two or three months I haven't done any modification whatsoever on my my clips. Then uh, then came 2017 and now we decided to do some big modification on the car. So I upgraded the sound system again on the car, changed the suspension, changed the brake, and also I decided to fabricate some custom parts for the car, such as the rear uh, fake disc that goes on top of the original brake that that appears like it, it create the illusion of having a big disc brake in the back with no calipers and I decided to do a couple of shows and it was super cool. In 2017 also we uh, created the Jetta but that's another story, that's another video. If you really want to see more about the Jetta and the whole story of the Jetta just click here and uh, you're going to see the whole story of the Bring Back Jesse Jetta but Let's focus on the Eclipse here. So in 2016, I made a lot of show, but to do a lot of show, uh, that means you need to drive a lot. And by driving a lot with that car, um, with the bad road in Quebec, there's a lot of bad roads here, and uh, the body kit began to crack, uh, the roof scoop began to crack, and there was actually some rust. Uh, that decided somehow to appear from some welding spots on the car because of a bad bodywork job that was made on the car when we first did the project. And I was pissed. At that point, I was like, do I continue my project? Do I scrap everything and start over again? I didn't know what to do. And then I went to uh, a very well-known body shop called Exclusive Automotive in, uh, in Quebec. So it's uh, probably two hours from Montreal. And I met the guy, I met the owner, and I was like, man, I have this Fast and the Furious Eclipse. The car is good, it looks great, but it's not to the level I really want it. I have also a Fast and Furious Jetta and that car is everywhere, people loves it. But I feel like the Eclipse is a bit left out and could you help me on making this car a bit better? So they agreed and probably two weeks after that, late October of 2017, the car went into their shop. And that's when the guy from Exclusive really put their magic on the car. And at, at the same time, I went to a place, uh, it's a movie, it's basically a movie car, or a movie prop auction online. And um, and then when the car was at exclusive, I told them, well, you can strip the car apart, you can remove all the panels and everything and fix what needs to be fixed. But just don't install all the body kit yet because uh, I have this inside from one of my friend in the movie prop world who told me that there's going to be a bunch of parts from the Fast and the Furious and uh, a, a bunch of screen use parts that were used on uh, stunt cars and stuff like that and they are going to be up for sale on this auction site. And I came up with a set of wheels that were on the Stun 2 Eclipse which is the blue eclipse in Too Fast, Too Furious. There's a second gen eclipse in Too Fast, Too Furious uh, that you will see on the screen. Uh, and my wheels came from that car. But in the movie, they changed the wheels. But if you see, uh, if you look in the special feature of that DVD, the Too Fast, Too Furious DVD, 
uh, you're going to see the car on the axis rims and that's the rims uh, that I bought from the auction. Also, I had the chance to get my hand on a front bumper and um, from the research I've done and from the certificate of authenticity that I got, that front bumper was from the Eero car and you may know that the Eero car, they change the front bumper after the movie and blah blah blah. So I got the front bumper, got the wheels and I got my hand on the Gen 1 APR GT2 wing for the Eclipse. So I had the perfect wing, the perfect front bumper and uh, the perfect wheels for the car. So I brought these parts, it took me about a month to get my parts and then I shipped the parts to the guy to the exclusive and they assemble everything. The other thing we had to do and that's one of the most answered question on the internet right now if you're building a Fast and Furious replica. What's the color code on the Fast and the Furious Eclipse? Let me tell you right away, straight away, it's not Kawasaki green, it's not from all the different shade of green from Kawasaki, but it's close to that. The color code of the car, well, I, the name of the color is Flea Green from PPG and that's what we uh, sprayed the car with. So that's the color of my Eclipse. And that's the color of the Eclipse that you can see at the Hollywood Star Car Museum in Tennessee because we went to color scan the car in order to spray my car. So <clears throat> fast forward a little bit to uh, March of 2018, we took the car out of this, the paint boot and the car was ready for the stickers, the graphics. And um, Modern Image sent me another set of graphics for the car, but we, uh, we decided to do some modification to the original file of the graphics. So that way uh, they would be perfect because the first kit that I received from them uh, there, the text was a bit too bold, there was some stuff, but after some research, I've worked with the guys and we changed the file quite a bit and uh, now all the graphics on the side skirt were perfect, the, the blue flames or the wing of the eagle, whatever you want to call it, um, everything was super perfect and we uh, unveiled a couple days after, we unveiled the car at the... Uh, the Salon d'Autosport de Quebec, so it's it's in French, but uh, we unveil at the like a muscle car import car car show in Quebec City. We unveil the car and we brought back the uh, Jetta, the bring back Jesse Jetta with us. So both cars were at the show and people loved them. It was super cool. A little bit after this show, the car went back from Quebec to Montreal for the first time in almost nine months. So it was cool to have the car back in the shop and I finally decided to work on some other stuff. So um, my buddy James King from Australia, he uh, got me, he gave me a super nice gift. He found me the uh, tackle meter from, uh, well, it looks like the original one in the movie. So it was a screen accurate tackle meter from video. We, we installed that in the car and it looked awesome. Also, we installed the AEM Big Break Kit in the front. I was super pleased on how the car came out. I still did some slight adjustment on the graphics. They were not just perfect enough for me. But in 2018, it was probably the best year for the car. The engine bay was just perfect. Everything was super. Until exactly a year ago. On this day right now as I'm filming this video we are uh, September 16th and on September 16 2018 there was a big show in Montreal called the import Expo we took the car there but not only that car we had to bring back Jesse Jetta and the newer addition to the fleet which was the project high Civic which was a replica of the fast and the Furious Civic we took the three cars to the show downtown Montreal and the Eclipse broke not once but twice on us like coolant problem, coolant overflow and the engine was overheating so bad but still we managed to get the car to the show and uh, after the show we had to go back to Montreal so instead of just bringing the three cars just like one drive to uh, to my shop we decided to actually 
drive the Jetta first, then the Civic, and then the Eclipse. But, but by the time we brought the Eclipse back, it was probably 10 p.m. and the car broke down on us. And I was super, super pissed. I can, there's even a post on Instagram, I think, from a year ago that says, okay, the season's over for the Eclipse. That car is going to storage. And it did. It, we, we took the car and I, I fixed some stuff on the car so that way it could run without overheating. And I took the car from my shop to my storage facility and the car stayed there until March of 2019, which is earlier this year. So the, both cars were booked for a show in Ottawa and uh, we decided to get the cars into the trailers. Like there was uh, one of my friend, he took the Eclipse and there's a company with big 53 foot trucks uh, with double stackers uh, that went to pick up the Jetta. So both cars went to the show. People loved them. It was super fun, but I began to realize that doing car shows with two replicas was too much of a risk and honestly it was super stressful and anyway after that weekend in Ottawa uh, we brought the uh, the Eclipse back and the Jetta and there was also another show that was right around the corner so in April of 2019 um, there was the Radical Speed Sport in Moncton and instead of bringing because the radical speed sport if you don't know it's like a big car show slash comic con so people can see actors from movies wrestlers and stuff like that and each and every year me and chad Lindbergh, aka jesse we are going to this event in moncton new brunswick and we are bringing the jetta with us but that year we decided to bring the eclipse for some reason and uh the response was not all that great. I mean, people who are fans of Paul Walker and Fast and the Furious, they freaking love the car, but it were like, okay, so you're with Jesse, but you have Paul Walker's car. We want to see the Jetta. At that point, I realized that maybe we should focus on getting the Bring Back Jesse Jetta perfect and move on to other things. Anyway, so we did the show, everything went well, brought the car back uh, in Montreal after the event. And um, anyway, I, I did some little car meet because the season was starting here in Quebec, late April, that's when the car meet starts. And uh, there was a car meet in uh, close to Montreal actually. And a friend of mine that came from Alberta to buy an RX-7, a Velside RX-7, uh, near Montreal, he sent me a message and he was like, Dom, I would love to see your cars in real life. I would love to see them. So uh, is Montreal far away from Ottawa because we just bought an RX-7 and we want to see your car? So I told him, well, if you want to, no problem, you, you can come, but it's a bit of a drive. And they were like, no problem, man. I really want to see your car. So we're coming to your meet. And at like 8, 9 p.m., uh, by the way, I was at the car meet with the Jetta, so he couldn't see the Eclipse. And after the car meet, he told me, well, is your shop far away from here? Because I would love to see the Eclipse. I really want to see that car. That's like my dream Fast and Furious car. So I told him, I tell them, sure, guys, come with me and we're going to the shop and follow me. I'm going to show you the Eclipse, but the car is a bit dusty. It came back from Moncton. I haven't washed it. But if you want to see it, it's there. So they came to the shop and my friend was like blown away to see the car. He was like, oh my God, that car looks so fucking good. And at that point I realized that maybe he would take care of that car, maybe even more than me. When I realized that Chad and I would do more shows strictly with the Jetta, I was like, I cannot take care of this Eclipse anymore and this car needs to be indoor, this car needs to be pampered a lot and maybe that guy would take care of this car a bit more so I don't know he's buying a lot of cars he really wants to build a collection of cars I'm going to well I'm going to ask him would you buy my car so 
I took my phone, sent him a text, and I was like, man, I'm thinking about selling the Eclipse, and I really want to sell it. I really want that car to, to be in good hands. But since you really seem to love that car, I really want to ask you first, would you buy my car? And he told me, well, man, just tell me your price. I really want it. And at that time, my goal was also to get my grandfather's Corvette back. And by the way, if you want to hear more on my Corvette story, you just click here and you're going to uh, have the whole story about the car. But anyway, I told him, well, I'm about to put this car on this famous auction website for collector cars. And here's my starting price for the car. Here's my reserve. Are you interested? And he was like, sure, no problem. I really want your car. So about two or three weeks went by. I decided to, because there was some issues with the Eclipse and I I didn't want to give him the car with problems. So the car went to Mitsubishi, uh, north of Montreal, and they redid the whole suspension, all the ball joint control arm and everything, brand new on the car, brand new steering rack direction, everything was brand new. And my friend at Innotech, they took a 420A and I think this is the most expensive 420A ever. He rebuilt the whole engine. Anyway, when I gave the keys of the Eclipse to its new owner, uh, that car never ran that great, ever. I never had the chance to drive that car in such a great condition with the brand new clutch and everything. Kind of breaks my heart quite a bit because I really love that car and I still love it by this day, but I have too much stuff to do, like the the Bring Back Jesse Jetta that we are still working on, the upcoming Maxima if we ever get 20,000 subs, the Corvette that needs some works, that's in project and everything, but still, the Eclipse was the car that I couldn't take care of it anymore, and now it's in good hands. By the way, if you want to follow my friend who bought the Eclipse, He's got an amazing collection of cars and I'm still helping him to this day uh, to build his cars and to make his collection the biggest you'll ever see. And uh, that way we can say that in Canada there's the biggest collection of Fast and Furious 1 cars. And uh, if you take my Bring Back Jesse Jetta, the upcoming Maxima, and all these cars, we are going to recreate the lineup of cars that you see on the movie. So that's super cool. Anyway, that's the story of the Eclipse. Uh, it's a bit of a long video. I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people who just changed the channel or just changed the video or whatsoever. But the diehard fan that follows me on Instagram and that really want to know more about the car, they are going to watch until the end. Anyway, uh, if you love that video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, that's super important. It helped me a lot to, uh, to make new projects for you, so subscribe and like. Don't forget to leave a comment because I really, I really want to know um, what videos you want to see from me? What information do you need? Do you Are you in the making of building a new replica? Something like that. Let me know so I can help you and I can create more videos regarding the subject that you really want to learn on. So guys, this was this week's video. I hope you enjoy and I see you soon. Bye.